For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba, lecturer at the Army and Defense Colleges of the South African National Defense Force. David Brock Kitts joins me to discuss his biography titled General Jan Smart and His First World War in Africa from 1914 to 1917. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. So a lot of books have been written about Jan Smart. So can you tell us what makes your biography to stand out against others? Okay, first of all, you say a lot of books have been written about Jan Smart. Yes, I agree with you. Um, but not lately, really. A lot of books uh, were written uh, in, the, in the 1920s to the 1960s. And then all of a sudden there was a hiatus. There were no... There were no new books coming out, and uh, now, uh, in the last couple of years, Richard Stein has produced uh, some some great books on Jan Smuts, and they've had a, a good following, and he's opened up the, uh, the his subject again for us to have a look at. My book, I went to the archives, and I researched the documents and everything like that, and uh, I came up with new material and produced a book on his military career during the First World War. So that's where it's a little bit different, is that I use primary documents and primary sources rather than just using old history books. And Jan Smuts first learned his soldier's craft under General Gauss de la Rey and Louis Bauder. So can you tell us more about his first exposure to military structure and discipline? It's actually very interesting. Uh, when he was what is known today as Stellenbosch uh, University, which was known as Victoria College in those days, there was a little university unit called the Victoria College Rifles, mm. which the university ran, and that's when he joined the, the this, this Victoria College Rifles, which was a, mili a little military unit at the university. So that was his first exposure to the military, actually, which was a bit of a British exposure, a bit of a British background behind it. He's then his next exposure was during the Boer War, a long time after that. And uh, as you say, he was tutored by these two great men, Louis Boerte and Chris de la Rey. He learned the Boer way of war uh, and how to fight as a, as a Boer under these two men. Mm -hmm. And tell us more about the changes uh, Jan Smuts made through his work ethic and powerful intellect during his tenure as the state attorney. When he arrived in uh, in the in the in, uh, in the Zuid Afrikaan Afrikaans Republic the ZAR, he was one of the most intelligent men to come there. One of the most well educated. He had been to Cambridge and he had earned uh, he had earned his d degree in law over there. When he came to the ZAR. Uh, Paul Kruger noticed him. He was brought to Paul Kruger's attention by Paul Kruger's son-in-law and noticed him and he soon rose. He became a very, very prominent member uh, of, of, uh, of Paul Kruger's uh, inner circle. And he went beyond just being the state attorney. He advised Paul Kruger on a hell of a lot of other different things also because of his intelligence. So people would come to him within the cabinet and, uh, and the parliament would come to him for advice. So he ruled on many things, wrote many laws, and consulted beyond just being the state attorney. So that was his rise to prominence in the ZAR. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about his role that he played in the German Southwest African campaign in 1915. Oh yeah, he played, a, he played a huge role there and it's been underplayed in the history books when you read about it. You won't see much about the Ansmuts and his role in German Southwest Africa. Uh, you'll most probably see uh, a lot spoken about Louis Boerter because Louis Boerter was the front man behind the whole campaign. He actually went to the front and he fought as, as, as a leader. One of the very few people, by the way, being a prime minister and in the front line, fighting together with the troops. Doesn't happen too often these days, didn't happen too often then. Uh, something like Napoleon almost. So Jansmas planned the whole German Southwest African campaign. He conducted a lot of logistics and the planning behind the scenes for Louis Boerter. And eventually he joined the campaign as, as, as a participant leading men what, with what was called the Southern Forces in German South East Africa. So he actually saw active service there also in 1915. So not only was he um, behind the scenes a general, sorting out all the logistics and the staff work, but he eventually participated and became a fighting general on the, on the battlefield in German South West Africa. Mm -hmm. And can you also explain to us what Smuts hoped to achieve by extending the war beyond the fall of Pretoria in what amounted to an emotional decision devoid of military or economic logic? You're talking about now the end of the conventional phase in the Boer War mm -hmm. and where he decided now that he's going to he's going to fight a guerrilla type war against the British and what did he hope to achieve? Well that, that, that's very interesting. Um, there's a number of aspects to this. They wanted a, to, to, to go to the negotiating table from a position of power. So they felt that they could wear the British forces down fighting a guerrilla war. 
and eventually get the British to the negotiating table and be able to negotiate independence uh, for their two Boer republics, which were the uh, which were the Orange Free State and the ZAR. So that's what they hoped to achieve initially. Eventually, when when Smuts and a lot of the Transvaal leaders saw that the war was not going according to what they w were planning, and they were actually losing the guerrilla phase, they were getting worn down by the British. They wanted to make a peace. And what stopped him was the was Stain, President Stain of the Free State, to turn around and said, "Listen, you've brought me into this war. You got me involved in this thing. I didn't want to be involved. Now you want to go and give up? I refuse. We're not going to give up. We're going to carry on fighting." So these people were termed, were termed the bitter enders, and uh, Smuts became a bitter ender. First of all, because he, he owed something to the Free State for coming in on their side, and he didn't want to he didn't want to make a separate peace. And then also, as I said, they wanted to try and get the best negotiating position at the negotiating table, which they knew had to come eventually. They did pretty well, by the way, at the negotiating mm -hmm. table, because the British were pretty war-weary, uh, so were they, and they, uh, they, they did well afterwards in 1906 when they got uh, a self-government and uh, for, for, the, for the Transvaal and the Free State. So they were able to come across as being worthy opponents to the British and, and, and worthwhile fighters, and that's what they gained. But they, had, they lost a hell of a lot mm -hmm. also. I mean, the, in the amount of deaths that died in the concentration camps and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And lastly, David, what are you hoping people take away after reading your book? Well, I hope they get a, a, a different vision of what Smuts is all about, because uh, we know about Smuts the philosopher with his holism. We know about Smuts the botanist, and we know about Smuts the intellectual, and Smuts the prime minister, and Smuts the cabinet minister, and the imperial war cabinet minister. We know all about that with Smuts. What we don't really know and what we, what, what we haven't really looked at in history is Smuts the general. Whether he was a competent and a good general uh, and whether he, he, he had a certain way of war, a Boer way of war that he applied in the way that he fought. So hopefully my book brings us out of the fore to say let's re-examine what he, what he looks like as a military general it's just, uh, as opposed to all the other aspects that have been looked at. So I hope this brings something new to the table. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. That was David Brockett speaking to Krima Media's polity about General Jan Smart and his first world war in Africa from 1914 to 1917.